Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our communications webinar. Uh, it's bang on three o'clock, and uh, I think we'll make a start. The session is being recorded, and we will be posting this live, uh, this, this recording onto our, onto our YouTube channel later this afternoon. Um, I'd just like to welcome my colleagues into the room as well. We have Darren Wood and Alex Schofield. Uh, Darren and Alec will be available to answer any questions that you may have as we go through the session. Um, on the right hand side of your screen, uh, there are a couple of options that you, you can have as, as we go through the webinar. Um, there is a questions box where you can ask questions and Darren and Alec will be working behind the scenes and ask, answering those questions as we go through the session. There is a handouts option. Um, for those on mobile, I believe it's at the bottom of your screen, but if you're using a desktop, I think it's on the right. Uh, our webinar slides are all uh, documented in the handout, so please click on there and download. Um, and at the very end of the session, there is a very short survey, which if, if you do have time, it would be great if you could fill out and we can get some feedback. So I'm just gonna pass you over to Darren, who's gonna do a very quick introduction, and Alec as well. Thanks, Alex. I'm just looking at some people that are actually on the webinar now. I think I know quite a lot of people already, so hopefully you all know me as well. Um, if you don't, you might have seen me at one of our uh, road shows in the past couple of years, the, the guy at the front shouting every 10 minutes to get everybody to move around. And as we know, it's not a normal year, so we've been unable to do our normal series of autumn road shows. But I think these webinars that we're going to do on a little bit more regular basis um, leading up to Christmas and beyond into next year, um, are a good way of being able to interact and, and get some things across to you. So I'm the relationship for manager for club systems. I'm sure most of you know that already, uh, but Alex is going to be doing this presentation. And as I say, I'll be sat in the background looking at your questions, doing my very best to answer them. Thank you, Thanks, Alex. Yeah, cool. Um, of course, um, I'll be assisting as much as I can. Uh, my name's Alec, uh, by the way, you might have met me at the last year's road shows. That was the first lot of road shows at Club Systems. Uh, perhaps um, there are some familiar faces that I can see in the chat. Um, however, I work quite closely with Alex and Darren um, and specifically to this webinar. Um, I'll just be helping out in the background to make sure everything's running okay. And of course, trying to answer as many questions as I can. Um, and hopefully, of course, you get all the useful information you can out of this webinar and hopefully you enjoy watching and you have a good time. Brilliant, thanks Alec and Darren. Um, one last thing for me in terms of housekeeping. I understand that if you're on a mobile, uh, you do have, I've, I've shared out my screen with you and uh, if you can see me rather than my shared screen, I understand that you can swipe to the side of your screen and you should be able to see uh, the slides and the live presentation later. Um, so hopefully that helps you as well. Okay, we have an early question. Uh, <laughs> very good from Andrew Webster. Brilliant. Okay, well, let's make a start. So we're going to be going through our Club B1 communications module, but we're also going to be focusing on the HTML newsletter functionality as well. So just to start with, just to outline our session, I'm going to introduce Club B1 communications and our HTML newsletter facility within Club B1. I'm, I'm going to explain the different tiers of Club V1 and the different packages of communications that are available to you, ranging from our entry package all the way up to our premium and, and ultimate customers. Then we're going to move on into the live demonstration. So we're going to focus on the communications aspect within Club V1. We're going to have a look at our templated newsletters to start with. Then we're going to go into the more advanced section of our HTML newsletters. And we're going to sidestep as well and have a look at MailChimp and actually create a newsletter and then import it into Club B1 for you to send. Then we're going to move on to Club News um, and look at how that, how the news articles get published onto the Club B1 members app and onto how did I do. Then we're going to move on to app notifications. So that's how our premium customers can send out notifications to any of their members on the Club V1 app. Lastly, we're going to look at the SMS capability within Club V1 and the different options that you have there. And then we're going to end the session. So at the end of the session, we will have some time to go through the questions that you ask um, and hopefully we can answer those. 
We will be sharing out all of the questions that have been asked as well. So as a follow-up, you will get the, the handout and you can have a look at the questions that have been asked during the session. So first of all, we're gonna have a look at our different uh, package levels. So we've got entry on the left, we've got management in the center and we've got premium and ultimate on the right hand side. So just to start with entry, there are no emails, no monthly emails available on our entry package which means that you cannot send emails or newsletters to your membership. However, you do get the club news facility. So you can create online news articles, which are then published onto how did I do? And sadly, you don't get the app notifications. Um, more on that in a second. With the management package, customers are allowed up to 20,000 emails per calendar month. And that also includes newsletters as well. You do get the club news facility, so you can publish online news articles onto how did I do, but you do not get the app notifications. This is a premium and ultimate only feature. So now we can move on. With premium and ultimate, you do get unlimited emails per calendar month and newsletters. You obviously you can create club news articles as well. These go to two places. You go at the How Did I Do publish and you get the members app news articles as well. And lastly, you do get the app notifications. So at the end of the presentation, we will go through how to send out those app notifications and make the most out of your communications within Club V1. So at this point, I'm gonna sidestep out of my slides. Everything that I go through this afternoon is included in my, in my um, seminar webinar slides. So you'll be able to see those after the session. So let's just take a side step here. We're gonna have a look at my demo environment of Club B1. And at the top, you will see our communications tab. So if we click into there, log back in. If we click into the communication side, in here we can go through and create our newsletters, which we'll have a look at first, app notifications, which we were just talking about, and you've got club news articles here. You do have the mailing wizard and the SMS, which we'll come to later. So let's start the session by looking at our newsletters. Like I said, there are two different styles of newsletter that Club V1 can create. By clicking on the plus icon, it brings up the creation of the newsletter. So first of all, if we give our newsletter a subject and it defaults to today's date, but you can forward date this or you can backdate it if you want to. Underneath, you've got your newsletter type. So first of all, we're going to look at the templated design that we give you through Club V1. And then we're going to move on to the custom HTML, the more advanced custom HTML, and show you the, the flexibility and the how you can brand those newsletters that you send to the members. So first of all, let's have a look at this, the, the templated design. That creates our webinar test in the system. So it gives us the header here. From here, we can then add in custom news articles or club news articles that we're going to create later. So let's start by adding a custom article. What we need to do is add in a title. Let's go for WHS, why not? As it's very topical at the moment. And in the body here, you can add any information that you need to, that you want to send to your members. Okay, you do have the option of bold, italics, and making this a header, and you can include bullet points or a numbered list if you want to. At the bottom here, you can add a read more URL link. So if you wanted to uh, have a click, click here at the bottom and it directs the members off to a, another website, perhaps your golf club website, or in this example, maybe England Golf or the RNA website for some more WHS information. So just on that, Let's have a look at how did I do. We'll copy the how did I do URL and we can paste it into here. So that means at the very bottom of our newsletter, it will say uh, more information. The user can click there and it will direct them through to how did I do. The next page, we can upload an image into our templated newsletter. This is my current image library, but I can always add new images if I want to. And that will just look at my desktop library on my computer. 
So while we're here, let's have uh, Justin Thomas and Jordan Spieth. Press continue and confirm. And that'll create the news article like so in our newsletter. Perfect. Now there's no limit to how many news articles you can have on your newsletter. So you can constantly just keep building these articles into the system. I do know that some clubs will on a monthly basis use this tool and build your news articles in uh, as the month goes on and different news items appear at the golf club. Um, and then when you're ready to send the newsletter, you can use the middle button here and you can then send it off to your membership, which I'll come to in a second. Top right hand corner, you can change the design of the templated newsletter. We've given you eight different styles and you can click through these and it does change the colors. Um, but that's as far as the templated designs go. And I'm going to explain more on that, on how you can increase uh, your brand through our communications module uh, with the HTML newsletters in a second. Okay, so you do have some different designs here. Some may be in your club colors. Um, others are more classical designs, which do work quite well, to be honest. And once you're happy with everything, you can then just press send newsletter. It takes you through to the mailing wizard. And from here, we can then choose our target audience. So we could send it to the whole membership. We could send it to just the men, just the ladies, um, whoever we want to using the filter section on the left hand side. So let's say we want to send it to the ladies. The system here is pulling through the 12 ladies in my test system. And you can see 10 of them actually don't have an email address. So it's only going to send to the to the two ladies there that do have an email address because newsletters are email only. If we press continue, I'm not going to press send. Uh, but at that point, it would send the newsletter to those two people. So that is our templated design. Now the other side of the coin there, if we click on the plus icon, we'll do webinar test again, but we'll call this one HTML. Now this time we can choose the custom HTML newsletter type. Now what we need to do using another, uh, a, a third party HTML newsletter creator such as MailChimp, which we're gonna go through in a second, you can populate here with the coding. So we're gonna sidestep out of Club V1 and just leave this parked. I know a lot of clubs do use MailChimp and it's very, very good at creating your own uh, branded newsletter and it's very, very powerful. So what we've done is allowed you to import any HTML newsletters that you've created in MailChimp and then you can import it into Club V1 and you can send it through there to your membership database. So just to start with, before I log in and show you the fe features and functionalities of MailChimp, just to give you an idea on pricing, you can use this for free uh, but you won't be able to send out emails through MailChimp, this is which is why you're going to be using Club B1 to send out. So you can design and create your own cool looking newsletter in MailChimp, and then you can send it out using Club B1. So I've got my link at the top, which I'm already logged into MailChimp. Okay, and in here you can create your own different marketing campaigns. So when I click on campaigns here, and we have a look at our email templates, it will pull through my created already uh, campaigns that I've worked on in MailChimp before. I've already created a test for today's webinar, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new one and then we're gonna import it from there. So just to explain how MailChimp works, when you go through here, you can choose the design and the, uh, the layout of your newsletter. Like so, there's many different options in, in MailChimp here. So let's go for, let's just go for one, uh, one and two columns here. Uh, maybe one column. <laughs> so it's just going to load up here. And what we can then do is we can add our club logo. We can ha add different custom fonts, colors, designs. It's very, very flexible. Okay. So in here, I can simply add in my logo. As you can see, and it's going to look at my image library and so on. Okay, and that put, puts my logo at the top there. Then I could edit the text here. And on the right hand side, you can see I've got an editor 
where I can start playing around with uh, my font. Okay, so we've got this as a test. I can choose my different styles. I've got headers, I've got fonts, font designs. It's all very, very flexible. And I can change the color. Okay, nice and straightforward. And that creates that newsletter like so. What I'm gonna do is just leave it there because you can play around with this in your own time. You can add in your social media links, you can add in videos, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Let's save that, we'll call it test. So just while that loads, that will add it to our list of email templates here. So we've got our test at the top and underneath we've got our, the webinar example, which we're actually going to use in a second. So once you've created your newsletter in MailChimp, you can then export the HTML coding and import it into Club B1 in order to send to your members. So on the right hand side, once you're happy with your newsletter, there's a drop down menu here and there's a button that says export as HTML. If we click on there and press export template, it will then download the newsletter into your downloads folder on your computer. And hopefully you can see on my on my screen, it's downloaded the CSI comms webinar HTML there. Now what we can do is we can open that and it will open that in our web browser. This is the technical part. So what we need to do is uh, copy the coding here into Club B1. Now we need to access the coding first. So what you can do is go to view page source and it produces the HTML coding there. We need to copy everything here. Control A, Control C to copy the whole lot. We can then go back to Club B1 and we can paste that HTML coding into our box here. Now it may not look like anything at the moment, but when we press save, that will pull through the HTML newsletter that we've created in MailChimp. So you can see it's looking really, really good, very flexible in, in the design and the branding. Um, in my opinion, far more powerful than the templated designs, but you've got the flexibility there. It's up to you which one you want to use. Okay, once you've imported it, you can, again, same process, we can send out the newsletter. Same process, it's remembered the filter that we had last time with the ladies, but maybe we want to change this and have all, all members. It's pulled through the 105 that are in my system. And again, I can just go through and send that newsletter out. I'm not gonna send it to the 53 people, so I'll be very confused. So that is the HTML newsletters. What we're going to move on to now in the communications hub, we're gonna be looking at the club news articles. So again, in here, uh, all package levels can create club news articles, uh, but premium and ultimate customers can create them and they also appear in the Club B1 app as well. So what we're gonna do is just go through and create a news article and then I'm gonna show you actually in my home club uh, where that appears in the members app and on how did I do. So using the plus icon on the left hand side, again, it just brings up the club news wizard and we can work through. Like so, so we can add in a headline, we can add in a summary, nice and straightforward. And we can populate the story here. There's no character limit there, so you can you can have a large story if you like. The example I'm gonna show you in a second is, is a WHS uh, news article that my home club have created. Underneath, similar to our templated newsletter earlier, you can add in a link, which is another click here for more details and it will take the user through to the website that you put in. So again, we've got our link address. So if we, again, if we use, how did I do? Paste, how did I do into there? What you can do, which is quite useful, let's just add in like so. The link text here, you can, you can, you've got the option here to add custom text. So what I could say is 
please click here to view the how did I do website perfect and now add that at the, at the bottom of the uh, the news article let's press continue again it looks at my image library and I can upload uh, new images if I want to or I can use existing ones that uh, I've already got in my library so let's press continue Lastly, you've got some options here and you as the administrator can choose when this news article is visible from and visible to. So if it was a New Year's Eve party, for example, you may want it to be there from today, but it, it will expire on the 31st of December. So it's really good for that as well. So it will just drop off once uh, the event has expired or you can set this to never expire. So for example, if it was a WHS uh, news article, maybe you do want to keep it there for your members to see at all times and you can remove it then when you want to. Perfect. Okay, and you can see here, it gives you a preview and confirm of what we want to uh, create in our news article. You can see here, it's just the, just the text that we added earlier and then it says, please click here to view the How Did I Do website, which is perfect. So let's press save. That will then add it into uh, my club news here. Because my demo is a premium account, it will upload it to the members app and it will upload it to uh, how did I do. Now I'm gonna demonstrate that in a live environment. So like I said earlier, my home club uh, use Club One Premium and I've got my account here. So when you do log into your account in the, in the V1 hub or the V1 app, you'll be able to scroll down and you can see the latest news articles on the left hand side. You can access it from the hub drop down and you can go into news here. You can see we've got lots of news, lots of WHS news. I'm sure most golf clubs are the same. If we click on the first news article, it just gives me, me as a member now, it's just given me some information uh, about WHS. Uh, and it's given me a link there, which would link me off to um, the England goal for the RNA website. Okay, so that's one location that the club news articles do go. The other is how did I do? Okay, so when I log into how did I do, obviously it takes me to my timeline. Uh, let's just go to my results. So for example, you've got your results here, but what I can do is I can go into my home club and one of the tiles here is news. So I could go to latest news and here it pulls through those news articles as well. So this is the feature that is available on all package levels from entry all the way up to ultimate. You can create club news articles that do appear in an online section via how did I do for all of your members to see. Okay, same news article as we've just seen in, in the V1 app with the same information. So it does go into those two locations that we've that we've discussed. Okay, let's just go back to Club V1 and let's just go back to our communications header. So a few more features in here. We discussed app notifications at the very, very start. Now this is a premium and ultimate only feature. So you would need to have the Club V1 app set up in order to use this. It's pretty cool because what you can do is you can send out in effect mini text messages, mini notifications to everyone who has downloaded the Club V1 app at your golf club. Okay, so we've got app notifications here. On the left hand side, it's allowing us then to compose that app notification. I can choose between all members, men only, ladies only. In this example, let's just do everyone. Then on the left hand side, we've got a message box. So in here, I could say uh, club championships booking is now live. It gives you a preview of what it looks like on uh, iOS, on iPhones, and underneath it gives you a preview of what it looks like on Android devices. Again, you can add in a target URL. So if you wanted to point them off to how did I do or your club website, that would work as well. Okay, and then when we press confirm, that will send it to your membership. Now, I will do that. Some of you in the session may get that because I think there are some people with an account in my demo system. So you can see that it sent it to 30 people and none of which have failed. 
Okay, and it does give me some statistics here of my app notifications, which is really, really useful. Okay, that is a free service up for premium and ultimate customers. Um, and I recommend that you try and maximize that as much as possible because it is a really, really good way of communicating to your members. Let's go back to communications. Underneath, we have the mailing facility, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. When you go into here, you can create your own new uh, email through Club B1. These are group emails. If you do need to send out individual emails, you can go to the member record in Club B1 and you can send that member an individual email if you want. From here, it's just gonna walk us through the mailing wizard. So again, we can add in our subject. It defaults to the, the email address that you've got set up in your club details in the settings section. Uh, so it's got my email there. Then we can start to compose the body of the email. What is quite useful is the insert data field here. So we've added dear to start with. And this is like a mail merge feature. So what we recommend, instead of putting dear member, you can put dear four names and then the email will say dear Alex, dear Darren, dear Alec. So then we could say your account balance is and we can use the insert data field and include the account balance and it will send the account balance to whoever, uh, whichever member you're going to be emailing. Many thanks, Alex. Again, you can add your read more URL, URL link. And as with any communication through Club B1, emails and newsletters, there is a consent here for GDPR. So at the bottom, if this is like a club uh, email with information, you do not need to specify that it's uh, GDPR. Now, what you can do, if it's a club promotion, perhaps you're advertising for the pro shop or maybe a, an event at the golf club, you can specify that this is a club promotions email and um, those who have opted out of receiving those communications uh, will not receive this email. You do have another option here for third-party marketing. Now, I know some clubs have an affiliation with a restaurant or a pub down the road. Uh, maybe they're going to market the 10% discount at those businesses. So you would, in order to be GDPR compliant, you would need to specify that this email is promoting a third party. Uh, a third party. Or you can specify that it is both club promotions and third party marketing. So it covers both bases there. Okay, in my example, none is okay. It gives us a preview of that email and you can see that's how it looks. I'm pretty happy with that. Press continue again. Then you can add in attachments. So you could add in menus, you could add in fixture lists, uh, welcome messages, uh, minutes from AGM meetings or committee meetings. You can just add them in like so, and it looks at the documents on your folder on uh, on your desktop, and you can pull through any uh, any document there. Then it moves on to recipients, and again, you can tell the system who you want to send this email to. So we can send it to the men, the ladies. Um, we can send it to the people just with an email address. So if we click on email address, one clever way of doing that. Every email address has an at symbol, so we can press apply filter, and then it's gonna pull through everyone with that symbol in their email address, which is, which is obviously every email. And in my demo system, I've got 53 people with an, with an email. Okay, if we press continue again, and at this point, we have the options to print uh, the letter, or we can email print, or we can email only. So email print will email for the ones who do have an email address and print for the ones who don't. And email only will only email for the ones that have an email address in the system. Now if I press send, that will send it to those 53 people. Lastly, we do have the ability to, to send out text messages through the system, okay? Now, first of all, you may need to enable that in your Club B1 system. So just to do that, I'm going to sidestep a little bit and we're going to go into the settings. 
And on the left hand side, you may have noticed there is an SMS settings menu. So what you will need to do, first of all, you will need to add in a sender identifier. So uh, that could be as simple as SFGC, Swinley Forest Golf Club, or in my demo, it could just be Wood GC. You are limited there. The character length is limited. Okay, that's why we've gone for Wood GC. Now there is a charge for the text messages and you would need to top up your credits within the system. The plus icon here will allow you to do that. So you, it's up to you how many uh, you wish to buy. You can buy up to up to 5,000 text messages if you want. They work out at 6p plus VAT per text. So it's up to you which bundle you go for there. Once you have credits in the system, you can then go to communications and you can use the SMS feature and you can send out text messages to your membership. This is a test. And at this point, you would again choose your filter. And as long as they've got an active phone number in the system, Club B1 will send out the text messages to those people. Okay, and you can see here, same as the emails, it does pull through the mobile number and will only send for those with an active mobile number. Okay, so that covers every aspect of the Club B1 communications. Uh, sorry, actually, just one more feature. There is a history folder. So in here, you can see all of your sent items. Um, so you can see who you've sent newsletters and emails to and the hit rates. So who has opened those emails and who hasn't. So in this test here, I've sent it to two people, recipients. It will show you who we sent it to. And you can see that Andy in this example has read the email and I, it's been delivered for me, but it hasn't, I haven't opened it, which is, which is perfect. Now you may get some undelivered. What, one thing to watch out for there is that uh, potentially that person has quite a high spam filter and their email servers don't like high volume emails coming through. So maybe you do need to communicate with uh, us and we can help you there because what that member can do is they can add in, uh, how did I do as a, as a as an acceptable sender into their emails. So they will start receiving club emails. Excellent. So that concludes our session on the communications. I am going to open up the questions on the right hand side for me and we're going to have a look at those now. As, as I discussed at the very, very start of the webinar, there is a handout with all of our slides on there. So please download those if, if you are interested. We will be sending out a report as well to all attendees uh, with the questions that have been asked. And I can see there have been a lot of questions, which is, it looks like Darren and Alec have been on top of these all the way through, which is fantastic. Let's just see if there's any unanswered that we can help with. It looks like Darren and Alec have, have answered them all. Chris Wren has said, am I correct when Alec said we get 20,000 texts per month? Um, that is depending on how many SMS messages you buy in the setup, but you do get 20,000 emails per month. Excellent. Darren's back in the session now. I don't know if you want to add anything at the end, Darren. Yeah, just so um, Colin mentioned, Colin Webster mentioned the question about the MailChimp uh, on the template on there. It's got the footer at the bottom that's got unsubscribe on that. Um, is there a way of removing the footer on the on the MailChimp? I wasn't sure about that because I haven't used let's, it. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. So we've got a HTML newsletter here. Yes, yeah, so I can see that's pulled through as well here. Um, that would is our system's pulling through what Mailchimp supply. So it's a very good question. Let's just have a look if we can go into Mailchimp here and remove it. There might be a way. I 
this is where MailChimp starts to be slow on me. <laughs> Is that going to load? I would expect, uh, maybe we need to have a little play around with it. Oh, it's loading here. I th Let's go to our communications newsletter here. Let me scroll down. So we can delete this content block here, it looks like. So let's just have a go at that. Perfect. Yes. So the answer there, Colin, is uh, yes, you can delete that. Again, just something to watch out for there in MailChimp. Um, I can I totally understand why that would be a good feature to remove. Um, so just when you're creating your HTML newsletter in MailChimp, just make sure that you do remove that if that's what you want to do, and then you import it into Club V1. Excellent. Is there any more questions, Saren? Sorry, I had an uh, unmuted myself. There are, there are some more questions um, at the bottom of the list now. Um, if I read them out, maybe you can help answer them. Um, yeah, go for it. So Andrew's asking uh, if you have 200 members, it costs 6p plus VAT per member. Now, my understanding is that you buy these in um, bolt on boxes. Correct, yeah. So if let's say you bought 1,000 text messages and you sent it to 200 members you would have 800 text messages left. But in effect, Andrew, yes, that each text message would cost you 6p, 6p plus VAT per text. Great, I think there's a, there's a few questions, certainly from uh, Stephen Tate and Chris Wren and a few of the people earlier on asking about why do certain emails end up in the, uh, the blacklist. Um, I've answered a couple online, um, pretty much reiterating what you said about the, the, the recipients um, stronger res restrictions on what they can allow into their, their mailbox on the other side is generally the biggest reason why? Yes, absolutely. Um, what they would need to do is add, how did I do as an acceptable sender? Um, we can assist with that on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, okay, from uh, Linda. Linda. Henderson, uh, using the comms hub, can you see the history of emails sent? Is there anywhere in the hub where you can see the email sent to members from their own profile or can this only be found from your Outlook sent box? I think it's just um, seeing, seeing the, the, the previous emails, communications that have been sent to members. Yeah, so you can access that in communications and history and anything you send out through Club V1 bills, EPOS statements, uh, knockouts you can see in my demo system here, newsletters, they will all just be listed on the left-hand side here. Okay, um, David Tilbury from Panel um, is asking, will analytics be extended to show what people have actually read uh, in newsletters, for example? I think we can just show the read rate of the newsletter, not who's read individual articles, can't we? That's correct. Yeah, you can on newsletters. Again, it lists that if we go to, I think I sent one out here actually. It's a newsletter. You will be able to see the percentage here of uh, read or unread newsletters. If you do include a link, like a read more uh, URL link, it does give you statistics on how many people have actually clicked that button. which I know can be quite useful. Okay. Um, oh, don't we got a few more flying in here? Let's... Uh, oh. Chris Wren has asked if we can add an, uh, to remove the MailChimp footer to your handout. Uh, we can update the handout, absolutely. And uh, yes, we can do that. Peter Hill has asked a burning question about WHS webinars. Um, we do have some in the pipeline. Um, I think after the session today, we're going to start to advertise uh, the next webinars. So we do we're going to host one next week as well. That one will be on the billing side of Club V1. And the following week, commencing the 8th of December, we will be hosting 7th of December, my apologies we will be hosting a WHS webinar. 
Uh, so keep an eye out in Club B1 and our website for that. Yeah, we're just on, um, I think as everybody uh, on the webinar today knows that the transition to WHS has not been uh, particularly smooth and there are still some one or two grey areas for both of ourselves and England Golf and the other providers in the industry. So um, I think we're just clearing up some of the some of the, the, the finer details of it to do the webinar so that we um, are able to answer as much as we can. Um, we can certainly go through a large portion of it now, but I want us to have a, a more fuller understanding of, of some of the intricacies of, of how it directly affects competitions, order of merits, uh, and those types of things. So we will be doing one in a couple of weeks, uh, with next week starting with a, with a billing webinar, followed by the WHS one. Correct. Uh, Neil Milton uh, asks, will the webinars be available to watch again? Uh, this webinar has been recorded and we will be posting this onto our YouTube channel, uh, hopefully later today or tomorrow. Okay. Um, question or a, a bit of advice actually from Carol Ellison from Bolton Old Links. But a cracking club that is, Carol, um, my home club, by the way, nobody knew. Um, email history, I have found you can actually also see in the members profile in under the activity. So, yeah, if, if you look under the individual members, um, under the activity, you can see all sorts of stuff under there, including the mailings and the activity. So that, that is a good, uh, good thing to point out there, Carol. Thanks. Okay, if there's anything on the, the, the webinars that we're doing at the moment, as I say, the next two are pretty planned, which are billing followed by WHS. Um, we have got some time for maybe one or two more before we get to the Christmas break. Um, so if you've got any ideas about what you'd like us to, to do a webinar on, anything that you think would help you in your day-to-day -day life, um, please let us know. Customer service at clubsystems.com is probably a great email address to send your ideas to. Um, and we are hoping to do these at least once a month moving into 2021. Uh, so one day a month, we'll probably host two webinars on that day, um, and it, it'd be great to know what you would like us to do the content on. So drop us an email and let us know. Yeah, so just on that as well, at the end of this session, um, there will be a very, very quick survey, and one of the questions in there will be uh, other topics you want us to cover. Sorry, just last question on the bottom down there from Peter Hill. I think we might have missed that one. Um, a question about the URL. Do you have an answer? So I think it was about... Go back to that. Which one's that? Um, uh, so please confirm which URL I use to send to my club only members, or does Club B1 automatically know? I'm not 100% sure. I fully understand. So if you're talking question. between members and visitors there, if that's what the question is for, if we go to communications, because obviously Club B1 will hold your members and visitor details in there. So one thing to watch out for is when you're creating your filter, if we just create a very quick test here. We don't need to add attachments. Now, when you get to the filter section on the left-hand side, what you can do to make sure that you are sending it to your members and not the entire database, is there is a filter section here called member, visitor, or contact. If you press add, you can filter out the, mem uh, out, out the visitors and contacts and it'll pull through your member only records, which hopefully should help. Now, what I would suggest is uh, saving that filter so you can reuse it rather than create it every time. And you can do that under people in directory. And on the left hand side, you can use the triangle button. It's actually remembered the filter that we just created in the mailing wizard. So what I'm going to do now is save that filter and call this members only. Okay, so now that is in my dropdown at all times for easy access. So if we just go back to our communications here, go back into mailing, let's create a very quick test email. At this point, we can then use the dropdown menu to find members only and it will pull through our members rather than the visitors. Okay, so just to clarify Peter's question, uh, it's actually about publishing club news onto the how to do timeline. Okay. Um, is it a separate URL to be able to do that? 
So it would post onto the how did I do news section. And what you could do, if we go to my home club, uh, go to home club here, scrolling down, you've got your news tile. Now that creates your custom URL at the top here. So we've got how did I do.com forward slash my forward slash news. And then you'll have your club identifier here. So Peter, if you do go and create a news article in V1 and it publishes to how did I do, you could use this URL link to put onto your website or to send to your members to direct them through to the correct news articles on, uh, on how did I do. Great, I think we've a um, uh, question from Graham Baker. How would you, how would I send, I send it to a subset of members, i.e. 21 of the 89 members? Yep, so again, just going back to our filter, maybe those 21 members, maybe you can't choose why, maybe they're not in a membership category, maybe they're all different ages, maybe they're different genders. There's no kind of uh, theme to that, to that filter there. So what you can do, if you want to filter out 21 individuals from those 89, if we clear away our member visitor and contact filter, we can go into add another field, we can scroll down and there is an individuals box here. And then you can start to type in the surname of the people that you want to add into the, into the email. Okay, like so, press apply and it just pulls those three members through. Great. Excellent. Um, probably last question, because I think we're, we're running up to the, a lot of time. Um, question from Stuart Almonds. Can you email directly from the diary, um, as into like a society contact or an event organized or something like that? So what you can do from there is you, when you create a, an event in the diary, it will create the contact as a person in your, in your database. And from there, you can email that, that, that uh, record. So you can't email them directly from the diary. From here, you won't be able to email the contact directly from here. But when you do create an, an event and add in person details, it will create them in your <clears throat> membership database. And from there, you can then email that person. Okay. So using Joe, let's say Joseph here is the uh, point of contact for our society. The Okay, I'm not sure if we've uh, second person you can then contact that that organizer. So there are still a few more questions, but maybe we can we, we get an export of all the questions and we can type up the answers uh, after the yeah. session. Okay. Okay, so cool. Darren, I'm I'm happy with everything. Yeah, good. Um so thank you everyone for attending let's just finalize it there so thank you everyone everyone for attending uh, as we mentioned a few minutes ago we will be hosting more webinars in the coming weeks and months so please keep an eye out in club you want for those uh, other than that uh, thank you very much for attending and uh, have a good day thank you